Hey everyone, welcome back to Yellow Jacket Garage. I appreciate you being here. You've caught me in the middle of a little bit of a project here. Um, what I'm doing today is I need to pull the seatbelt retracting mechanism out of the car. Um, reason why is the seatbelt is locked. And the reason the seatbelt was locked was the car took a little bit of a uh, off the shoulder uh, adventure the other day. Nothing major, no damage, wasn't an accident. It just was off the shoulder and I, I suspect that the angle of that shoulder on the road and the rapid deceleration and whatnot that the car must have thought that it was uh, and probably I'm sure there was a little bit of um, uh, brake lock and whatnot so the car thought that it was either in or be getting ready to be involved in an accident so it blew the pyro fuse in the uh, the seatbelt retracting mechanism and locked the seatbelt so easy enough I suppose learning experience but uh, oh and I wasn't driving, so anyway, we'll leave that right there. The uh, uh, process is relatively easy. The most difficult thing I think so far that I've encountered was trying to take this side panel off the seat, making sure that I knew how, or made, make sure I got it off of there without breaking it. And uh, if you do happen to have to do this job or pull this side off, or if you have one of these panels that's breaking, it's not that difficult to uh, replace. And they're only about 35 or $40 online. Uh, if you need one of these side panels, yeah, I, I can shoot me a message through uh, YouTube and I can um, help you find one. So anyway, um, email is yellowjacketgarage at gmail.com. I'd be more than happy to help you uh, find a, a source this part if you need one of these, if you have an R171. So easy to find, inexpensive, and relatively easy to replace. So I'll show you that part um, either here in a few minutes or at the tail end of the video when I put it all back together. But basically this is what I'm doing. I have got a, I, and I had to pull the side, the, uh, the side panel, the trim panel off so that I could access the bolt down here on the side of the seat so that I can pull the uh, seat belt loose from there. So got that part of it done. I'm going to go ahead and knock the seat belt off of here and then figure out how to pull this trim apart. There's a couple screws here. Oh, let me do that before we, uh, before I get too crazy. Uh, the removal of the side panel, on the front side here, there are these two screws. And then on the back, there's a, um, a little clip right here. And then there's a hook down here that this piece slides over. And so basically you pull the front two screws Pop the center little, uh, these little frog leg clips that are in here. Now pop those out and then slide the side panel to the rear. Once it slides to the rear, it'll pop loose off of there and then it comes loose. And so putting it back on, it's just reversing the process. You figure out where that clip goes, slide it in there, pop the frog legs in and put the two screws back in the front. Uh, these two screws are a 20 Torx is the size of them. And a really pretty easy process. I'm going to leave all that stuff right down there so it's out of the way, but doesn't get lost. So now from here, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and pull the seatbelt. And then we'll figure out how to do this. So, so far, it's been a relatively easy project. And it has been informational, educational for me because I've learned that these parts are available and inexpensive at $35 a piece. So if I break that or something happens down the road, I know I can find that piece. Um, I'm actually kind of surprised at how many parts are actually available for this car being as old as it is. So that's great. Yeah, I've got, uh, I'm in the garage. It is a relatively cold day outside. And so I've got uh, my little Mr. Heater, uh, Buddy Heater running. It's a little propane heater. It's kind of down here underneath the camera so you can't see it. But of course I go to move the heater around a little bit, grab the handle and, uh, yeah, I guess I didn't need that hair on my forearm anyway. So anyway, let's get the seatbelt pulled out of here and we'll be back. Okay, um, first hurdle we're facing is the seatbelt is held to the side of the seat uh, with a T45 uh, Torx bit. And the problem is the space that's down here is not... Uh, conducive to actually having a ratchet with the uh with like like uh this with my t45 socket on it and so it doesn't give me let me get up here so we can see this doesn't give me the the 
distance. If it was just the socket and a thin wrench, then that would be a lot better. But the way this is set up, it, it's just uh, too deep. And in between the uh, seatbelt bolt and the rocker panel, or the inside rocker, whatever you call this here, the floor pan doesn't allow for that much room. So what I've done is I have another type of a, a Torx socket. It's an, uh, just a, basically, it's the 3 8 size. And so I've got a 3 8 wrench. I'm going to put it on there. And then I'm going to use just another wrench to see if I can actually get this thing to knock loose. So let's give this a try and see what happens. Let's try it without... Oh... Okay. Well, that's nice. I actually didn't need to use the leverage. I had that there just in case. I know those aren't torqued on there super tight. And so that's my concern was that maybe it was or it had Loctite or something, but, but it is not. And so there we have it. Our seat belt is out and, uh, going to go ahead and put that bolt back in there. It does not have any uh, thread locker on it, so that's good. But we'll put it back in there so we don't lose it. And as far as that goes, we are good. So now it's a matter of figuring out how to get this part apart. And I know we will use... What size is that? Okay. So for the two screws that are here, it's Torx 15. 15 in the wrench, and then we'll get on to that part of it. So that's how you overcome some of these difficulties that you might face, and uh, it actually turned out pretty pretty easy. So, nope, all I've done now is just gotten the seat belt to re retract and lock further in than that. But the good news is the seat belt will go all the way through that pocket. So, all right, let's go ahead and uh, let me see what I can get done on this. And uh, we'll update as progress continues. Um, I'm not filming the whole thing only because it's kind of in tight quarters and whatnot. And so it's going to be easier for me to explain what I've done. Um, and if I can show, then I will. So if there's something that I think is important to see, I'll try to get a camera angle on it so that we can look at it. But anyway, let me go ahead and uh, get the rest of this part done. Okay, so these uh, little Torx 15 screws, I pulled them out. Uh, they come out of this plate, which sits over on this side. And as soon as I pull those out, this whole piece here uh, is all on spring clips and whatnot. So it came out really easy, which is really good news. Now there is a speaker that's plugged in here. So I'm going to try to keep this set up here so there's no tension put on those speaker wires and whatnot. And as I need to wiggle my way through there to figure out where everything else is, um, then I'll, I'll move it as needed. But uh, that's really, that piece is out of the way. Uh, just a matter of, uh, looks like one more of those uh, Torx bolts on the top that holds the, sh the shoulder, the over the shoulder strap on. And then a matter of pulling out this piece of uh, interior body trim. And then I'm sure it's a matter of pulling a couple of uh, wires loose and then unbolting the uh, retractable mechanism or retracting mechanism itself. And that should be about it. it, should be out. So let's see. Okay, what I want to do is just kind of give you a little of a insight as to what's going on on this side of it. So this is where this bolts up here. Try to move this a little bit so we can see it. This bolt here bolts into this little hole here. And that's the over-the-shoulder portion of the seat belt that holds that in place. We had to pull the carpet out a little bit. And then we can see where the seat belt retracting mechanism is. This little tab here has to come up to this spot here and, and unlock. It kind of holds it all in place. And the problem is there's this foam, super dense foam back in here. I don't know how well you can see it, but it's there. Um, pushing into it. And that kind of holds it tight, but I know it's sound deadening material. And then this is a, a metal structure that runs all the way across the back side. And I'm thinking that I might have to pull some of these bolts to give me just a little bit more room 
to get the uh, mechanism out of there. I don't see it being a big deal, but uh, I just kind of wanted to give a visual on exactly what's going on. I'm going to try to do that without pulling this metal, without pulling all these bolts out, because they run all the way across, and I really don't want to pull this whole carpet out, because uh, I think this whole top piece has to come off, and there's a whole bunch more stuff that has to come out, and I'm not really excited about doing that. So, anyway, let's see what we can get. All right. There we have it. Actually, I uh, was able to pull that carpet, uh, that backing a little bit further, and it gave me all kinds of room. And then uh, from there, it just uh, kind of had a little bit of wiggling around in there to do. And then there's this clip at the top of it where the wiring goes in. And uh, that's the piece right here, actually, that uh, is causing all the fun. So, anyway, that's it. It's out. We're good to go. I'm going to kind of put some of this stuff back in place so that I can move the car back over. I'm going to go put this in the mail, get it sent off, and uh, get this car put back together and back on the road. All right, we are back. It's been a week and a half or so. Um, I sent the seatbelt off to Safety Restore in Massachusetts to uh, have the uh the switch tensioner whatever it's called uh rebuilt and uh actually the process i wasn't sure what to expect basically bought it uh, bought the service put the seat belt the whole thing in the mail sent it to them and they were amazing the whole way through and uh sent me uh, text messages and, and emails letting me know the process as soon as they got it, I got a text message from them saying that, hey, we received your seatbelt and we're working on it. The next day I get a text message from them saying your seatbelt is done and uh, it, we dropped it off at the post office. It's on its way back to you. And within just a couple of days, I had it back and uh, now we're going to reinstall it and uh, get this thing back on the road where it belongs. Okay, I'm hoping that this is a, a, a way that you can actually see it with me being kind of down in the hole at the same time. This wire here is what goes to the SRS system. So I'm gonna leave that disconnected until I get the seat belt in place. And the seat belt, hopefully will just fall back in there. Now, let me pull this back out and I'll show you what I'm looking at. See, this little tab that it's like a T-bar tab needs to set in this little locking position right here. And then the seatbelt bolt that's down there goes through and, and uh, bolts into this to hold the seatbelt forward. So it's just a matter of finagling it into position to get it to go. I think I'm going to pull that wire completely out of the way because I can tuck that back down by the side. Because this is just foam right here, so I can work around that. Yeah. I thought I was going to leave it unplugged while I did this, but that is not going to work because I won't be able to get that plugged back in. So this pin clips in and then twists and then locks. So there it is, twisted. And now it's locked into place. We'll cut this off when we're done, when we have everything put in there. And there we go. Seat belt is back in place. Grab this bolt, put it back in there. That ought to be tight enough. All right. Now we'll pull this back out of the way. We have 
We need to get that threaded all back up and through there, back out and around, and then uh, put it all back together. Now I didn't pull this bolt out of the uh, shoulder holder just because I didn't want to have to deal with putting it back in or forgetting where it went. Now, let me pull this back up here. What I'm going to check now is make sure that when the seat belt comes up, it's going all in a line and not twisted in here, which, which it is. So that's good there. Same socket. Now this piece pivots, so you don't have to worry about lining it up or anything like that since it's all that way. We have that tight. And now what we want to do is feed the seat belt back through this slot. And now we can put this piece back on. Okay, update. We got the top piece put back in place. Now I'm going to grab that plate and uh, put that plate back in here where it goes. The plate sitting there. What I'm going to do now is basically button everything back here up because that is done. I'm going to snap the seat belt back up there because that way it'll hold that out of, out of the way. So what we got to do now is tuck this carpet back up underneath. Try to be very gentle so that we can get it up under there without having to take the whole top cap off. There is the this piece here. There's a screw that plug that goes over the top of that this carpet goes back over here that one is in there we go got that on there got that on there let's go ahead and put this weather stripping back on It needs to kind of go down a little bit. There it goes. And that's all back in place. Let's put this piece back on here. And it goes right in here. Kind of locks that all together. Hey, UPS is here. Gotta go. Okay, UPS didn't bring anything exciting. Just want to make sure that it's snug. That's it. That part is in there. Okay, so now what I want to do is, this is that little button that goes back on the carpet back here. Screw that back on. And it's a button that holds the little windscreen and stuff on back here, When if you have one of those, which... This car had one at some point, but I, I don't have it, so just kind of the way it is. This one's kind of down in the middle of where it's difficult to get to, so oh, I'm not going to believe that I'd, I don't believe I did that. Hopefully. Yep, i got to pull that all back apart. Anyway, okay. Got to take the uh, zip tie off of there. All right, that part is done. Now let me do this over again. Okay, just got done. It's all back together, buttoned up, and everything. Um, I went ahead and started it up. Still have the SRS airbag warning light that the seat belt had locked. So basically what I'm going to do with that is uh, plug in my thing, see if I can reset that code. If I can't reset that code, um, I'm going to take it down to a friend of mine who owns a body shop and have him 
uh, reset the code for me. So really pretty simple process. Make sure you reset the code because that way it lets you know if there's something else in the system that is a, a fault, um, like airbags or something like that. And those are important to have. I think once when the uh, SRS malfunctions, I don't think it works at all. And so it's important to have that on and functioning if you have those safety devices in your vehicle. So anyway, that's it. Really a pretty simple project. If I'd have had a seatbelt to put in it, it would have been a couple of hours start to finish and uh, simple tools, but it's done and uh, wouldn't be afraid to try to tackle that one again. So anyway, if you like what you've seen so far, please consider subscribing to my channel um, and uh, liking it as well or liking my videos as well. But anyway, all of that stuff that you do helps the channel growth and uh, it helps me get seen more and helps my channel get bigger. So anyway, thanks for watching Yellow Jacket Garage. And as always, we'll see you on down the road.